Hi, this is Mark from LongIslandWatch.com. Coming out with another watch and learn. Um, a very specific purpose with the release of the Sands Point model uh, just a couple of days ago. I know a lot of people are going to be asking how to size the rubber strap. It's a special kind of strap and uh, on a deploying clasp. So I'm going to do a video. I'm going to size one for myself here so you can um, see how to do it yourself. My strap videos or size, bracelet sizing videos have been the most popular videos on YouTube, especially in the Watch and Learn series. So if you haven't seen them, you know, maybe you want to check them out. But I'm going to skip all the usual stuff and let's get right into sizing this new beautiful watch. So we're going to be learning how to size a rubber strap. This is the Islander Sands Point. Um, but it's a special kind of rubber strap because it goes into a deployant clasp and there's no tongue and buckle or prong and buckle uh, to slip everything through. So how do you do it? Well, it's rather simple. The most important, I would say the most, most, most important thing is to know that you can never put strap back on. You can only cut it off. So this is a one-way operation. So go slow, a little bit at a time, because if you cut off too much, guess what? You're screwed and you gotta get a new strap. The tools I'm gonna use are any kind of razor blade, I have an X-Acto knife. Spring bar tool, you may or may not need. And I've got a couple of toothpicks and we'll get into that. So the first thing, the first thing I'm going to do, you'll notice that, so I'm actually gonna size this for myself. This is gonna be my watch. Um, I'm gonna leave the plastic wrapped on the head because we're gonna be doing this a lot. And because it's titanium and it's blasted, I wanna protect that finish. Uh, so the first thing I'm going to do is remove the plastic from the clasp. So the plastic is off the clasp, and then we'll do, we'll do a test fit, right? I'm gonna take it off, I'm gonna fasten it to my wrist, and I'm gonna look, and I'm gonna see that, I know that there's an obnoxious amount <laughs> of leftover, but don't get, too, don't get too cut happy and be like, oh, I gotta remove nine segments and take off all nine, because don't do that. Hone it in slowly. If you see something like this, yeah, maybe you wanna start off with two from each side and take it from there, um, but just go slow. But before we even do that, we're going to remove the clasp. I'll have to leave it open. Remove the clasp from the strap. So in order to do that, I'm going to bring my toothpick in and on one side, I'm going to just depress the spring pin. It comes out. And then on the other side, I'm going to do the same thing again. Now it's important to note that the strap is on the last hole of the clasp right now, making it uh, theoretically the largest it can go. What I am going to do when I reinstall for the first time is I'm going to put it more towards the middle. This will allow me to take advantage of the micro adjust when my wrist swells and shrinks with the weather. So now that the clasp is off, like I said, I am, well, you're going to remove the pins from the bracelet, uh, from the strap or bracelet, whatever you want to call it, and you'll see on the underside these beautiful cut lines. You will notice there's more on one side than the other. This is by design, so that the clasp fits as well as possible on the underside of your wrist um, because of the way the clasp is designed. And I'm going to start off by taking, um, I'm gonna take off just one from each side just to show you. And then after you do that, well, let's, let's do that. So I'm gonna see the line. I'm actually just gonna take the knife and just gonna saw right down. You don't have to be totally Careful, I know a lot of you are kind of nuts with this stuff, so you will be. Um, but a lot of this is going to be hidden by the clasp itself. So I'm just going to cut off one from each side. That's one side, and get straight. There we go. And there's the other side. So these are garbage now. You cannot reuse those. So you have the watch, you have the clasp, and they say, oh man, which way does the clasp go? Fold over always goes towards 6 o'clock. So six o'clock side goes where the fold over is, so that's over here. But one other thing you wanna make sure of is that, besides that you don't put it on backwards again. So fold it up, make sure you're happy, make sure it's gonna seat correctly when you're done. Um, you see this part, the fold over? Don't do it like this, because it's gonna get stuck underneath the strap. You have to make sure it's this way. So you're gonna collect your spring bar again, put it in, and let's see if we can't make the spring bar seat properly. We may have to cut off a little more of the rubber. There's a little bit sticking out, but this is all good. It's a learning process for both of us. You may be able to use your fingernail 
I'm going to just use the tool, depress it, and see if I can sneak it in, and I did. So that's one side. I'm going to go to position number three. Apologize if the angle's not the greatest, but you guys probably know how to do this by now. Um, yeah, three. I think I'm in three. Yeah. So you could allow the excess to kind of sit in here if you want and move it around that way. That's fine as well, but I know I'm be cutting off a heck of a lot more. As long as the strap doesn't interfere with the clasp, the mechanism, you're fine. So I've just removed two pieces of rubber and then I moved the micro just in a bit. So I'm gonna put it back on my wrist and I'm gonna kind of stop here for now. And I look, I say, okay, I gotta remove a little bit more. Yes, it's a very drawn and drawn out process and kind of long, but you know what? It's better than cutting off too much and not being able to go backwards. So I'm going to pause for a minute. I'm going to keep bringing it in. Um, and like I said, so I, maybe one other point to mention is that I definitely have less here than I have here. It is okay to eventually start bringing this in before that you may very well just have to. But let's keep going and uh, I will see you when I'm done sizing it. Okay, and here we go. I think I got that, whoops, I think I got that just right fit for myself. I haven't unwrapped the head yet. I will, I will soon. Um, a couple of things that I did, I, I just wanna show you. Um, if you can see, I have the bar actually going through, get a pointy stick. I have the bar actually going through this one. And this one's empty. And that would allow me, I, I said in the beginning, you really need to, you know, kind of like a cut twice, no, Cut, you cut once, measure twice kind of thing, you do. Um, but if you're gonna use a lot of the micro adjust, you can leave the bar and a little bit of overhang just in case. Um, and another thing that I did realize when I was putting it back together a couple of times is that when you're putting it back onto this side, you may need to really use your blade and scrape the rubber a little bit extra to get it to pass the um, that bar that's holding the fold over or else you can't seat this spring bar properly. But I feel like I'm in a, I feel like I'm in a good spot. I like the way it fits and feels. And uh, I am going to enjoy wearing my new Sans Point and I have micro just to go in either direction. So that's about it. Uh, this has been Mark from LongNightWatch.com. you're gonna size a uh, fitted rubber deployant strap. Please like the video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe, I guess I'll put it over here. <laughs> Subscribe to the channel if you have not done so. Questions, comments, concerns, queries, anything else, you can put it down below and I'll be sure to address it as soon as I can. Thank you very much for watching. Bye-bye.